Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. God gave us his word to show our covenant rights as children of God and how to live in victory Jesus won for us. Now, included in that victory is the ability to live free from the influence of fear. All this week, Kenneth Copeland will be sharing with you seven steps to living fear-free. Discover the principles of God's Word that will help you live the fearless life Jesus made possible for you. Let's start our series today by first establishing this absolute truth, we have been delivered from all fear. We've been delivered from fear. We're not trying to come to the place where some, in some strange way um, we can cope with fear. We don't cope with fear. We attack it. We've been delivered from it. Now turn over there to the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Remember now he said, through the fear of death, they were all their lifetime subject to bondage, subject to it, like someone is subject to a king or subject to their authority or whatever they say you're going to have to have because you're their subject. Well, if, if there's fear of death and that, that fear of death is the master fear, all fears stem from the fear of death. That was the first thing that struck was the fear of death. Now, all you have to do really to, to study that out, very simple, just think of all the different ways that you could die. The first human death was, it was a murder, wasn't it? So there's fear of dying at the hand of another person. That all fear of people is based in that. You could starve to death, couldn't you? So all fear of lack and not having enough, whatever form it takes, the worry about it, all of that, all the doubt and unbelief that creeps into your thinking. That's what Jesus was talking about to Jairus, and he said, don't tolerate that. Don't allow your mind to think on that because it'll contaminate your faith. Well, all of that is based on dying by not having enough. And you could go, you could analyze it on down the line. All fear, timidity is a fear of people. Self-preservation is based in there, in, in fear of death. Now, go with me to the chapter of the book of Romans and look at this. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But if, now if you listen to most religion, it'll lead you right back over into that spirit of bondage because it'll sow fear into you. Do you ever wonder why when somebody reads, uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and, and didn't just run out the front door of the church screaming and hollering as loud as they could, my Lord, my God in heaven, hallelujah forever. I'm the righteousness of God. They're afraid to, that's why. Preachers and, and theologians and and so-called seminaries and all that kind of thing and, and people just dreaming it up on their own. Afraid. Well, I'm so unworthy. I'm so no good. Well, are you trying to become worthy? I'm working on it, Brother Copeland. I'm being the best I can. That's the reason you're so frustrated. You're trying to become something you already are. Look now, right there in that eighth chapter of Romans, it says, You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, I have a father, Amen. I have a daddy. Amen. I'm no longer a spiritual orphan. That's right. Hallelujah. He's my father. And even when he manifests himself, I mean in such a great way that it just shakes you right down to, to your soles of your feet and your hair sticks straight out on the back of your neck. 
You ought to be shouting, that's my daddy, that's my father. Woo! And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because he's my daddy, that's why. And he's the biggest thing in the valley. Amen. Amen. Yes, he's my father. Now, notice that Christian people agree to that. Oh, yes. Amen. But how many of them do you hear them running around crying? Ah, oh, my father. Woo, I got a father. I have a daddy. Oh, glory. And he loves me. And he's rich, 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 rich. And he's big, 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 big. Fear contaminated faith will keep you from acting like that. Just fear somebody's going to hear you say it. Doesn't take much of it. All it has to do is quieten you down a little bit. Turn your tape down just a little bit. Because after all, you wouldn't want anybody to think you're a fanatic. I don't care what they think. Amen. I don't have any fear. None. Hallelujah. Glory, well, you can just shout amen if you want to. Glory. Now, Come to the absolute understanding. And, and you need to be meditating on this. You need to be spending time reading these scriptures over and over. The absolute understanding that we are delivered from fear and have been delivered from it for 2,000 years. Now then, let's go to step number two. Resist the spirit of fear. Knowing, and underline the word knowing. I'm talking about coming to an, uh, a decision, coming to that knowing place. Knowing that fear is not okay. Well, Brother Copeland, you know, I feel like, you know, fear's okay. I mean, everybody, everybody's afraid of something. And, uh, and even, uh, you know, a little fear might be healthy. They, they'd tell us, you know, when we went to uh, psychology school, <laughs> <laughs> that a little fear is healthy. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful hmm, and unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Look at the company fear keeps. Huh? Amen. Well, I believe a little fear is healthy. Oh, is that right? Well, I guess just a little abomination now and then be all right. And a little murder. You know, don't kill nobody, don't need killing. <laughs> <laughs> whoremongering. I mean, you know, they're whoremonger around a little bit. Why, you know, just don't let the pastor catch you. <laughs> well, when you see it in the light of the way God sees it. Now, how many times can you recall that the scripture says, thou shalt not murder? Now, in English, it's been translated, thou shalt not kill, but that's, that's the wrong rendering of that scripture. It, in the Ten Commandments, it said, thou shalt not do murder. 
Now, how many times can you think of? I mean, it, you know, it's stated there once and it's referred to, you know, through the scripture. No murderer enter into the kingdom of God and that kind of thing. Several anyway. But over a hundred and ten times in one form or another, God commanded, fear not. Now, why is it okay to break one commandment and not okay to break the other one? Well, I know, Brother Cole, but I mean, like I said, everybody's afraid of something. Well, the whole world out there thinks everybody does a little adultery now and then. Amen. Amen. The only reason the whole body of Christ doesn't resist fear, they have adopted the idea that fear is okay. And through a lack of knowledge of what it really is and the fact that Jesus bore it on the cross just the same as he did every, all the rest of that, I mean, and, and God commanded to fear not. Didn't he command Jairus to fear not? God told Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong, be courageous, and be not afraid. Now, all the times that God commanded fear not, he never just ended it there. He said, fear not for I. Uh -huh. Fear not because I'm here. Fear not because I will never leave you nor forsake you. Fear not, I'll take you by the hand. Fear not, I will charge my angels to get involved. Fear not. Amen. All went the way to the point that we can walk in a fearless, no fear here lifestyle, having no fear operating in us at all to the point you can be bold on the day of judgment. That's strong, man. I mean, there's some there's pretty strong stuff coming down the road on the day of judgment. Amen. You can stand up there and be bold and say, Jesus, I'm right here with you. I don't have any fear of this. Amen. Now, you notice, you notice how particularly in times like we're involved in now, how hard the world tries its best to shut us up from talking about the book of Revelation, shut us up from talking about the apocalypse and the, the end of this and the end of that. Of course, it ain't an end for us. This is the worst it's ever going to be. This is as bad as it'll ever get for us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> particularly when you don't have any fear, it's because they're all scared spitless of the end of the world. And we're not. Because what's an end for them is a beginning for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We walk fearless. We have great honor and respect for the wrath of God, but we've been delivered from that wrath. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Glory to God. We don't have any fear. Amen. Hallelujah. That's exciting to me, is it you? Amen. Now, let's get uh, in these last moments here, at least we can introduce the, the next one. Well, no, the Lord's not going to let me do that. I, knowing that fear is not okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 1. You're all familiar with that, but let's read it. We've quoted a lot of it and misquoted it sometimes and have quoted it. So today we're going to get the whole thing. 1 Timothy 1, everybody's familiar with the, uh, or excuse me, 2 Timothy 1. Everybody is familiar with that seventh verse. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But let's go up to the fifth verse and get this, this whole statement that the Holy Ghost made through the Apostle Paul. Verse 5, when I call to remembrance the un feigned faith that is within thee. There it is. When I call to remembrance the uncontaminated faith that's in you. Are you listening now? That is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother and your mother and I'm persuaded that is in you also Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, that uncontaminated faith, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
He said, you stir up what God has put on the inside of you. You stir it up. He didn't say anything about praying and getting God to stir it up. You stir it up. You stir it up in the Word. You stir it up in prayer. You stir it up in the Holy Ghost. You stir it up with your tapes. You stir it up by bold, strong confession that while you're saying them, your knees are knocking together. Glory to God. Amen. But it's God's Word and you put it in your mouth. You stir it up. You stir up the gift that's inside you that God gave you. God did not give you the spirit of fear. So quit stirring fear up. Fear is not okay. Get it out of your mouth. Don't use it to express yourself. Now, when you're renewing your mind and you're in training, other people are going to accuse you of splitting hairs and being nitpicking. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to change something like your mind and change your, change your daily way of life and you're going to change your habits, you're going to have to be nitpicking because they'll take you over and run you in the ditch if you don't. You're going to, you have to team up with somebody that's full of faith and, and train together, work together. Like Gloria and I, when we first got a hold of these things and we changed our confession from death and fear to faith and life, we made a pact with one another. And we said that well, whatever comes out of your mouth, well, that's your confession, and I believe every word of it. And you know, I'd say something wild, and I'll tell you what, I'd, oh, man, it scared me to half to death. She'd say, well, that's your confession. Now, we did that until we completely retrained and became aware of what was coming out of our mouths. Why? Because that was stirring up the fear, stirring up the doubt, stirring up the unbelief. Change your conversation. If for no other reason, just to be honorable and have respect for the Lord Jesus Christ who has been anointed and appointed the high priest of your conversation. Get fear and death out of your mouth. Quit stirring that up. We've not been given the spirit of fear, so stop receiving it. What have we been given? The spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. So a fear-filled mind is not a sound mind, is it? Amen. But a faith-filled mind is. A love-filled mind is. Hallelujah. Amen. So stir it up. Stir up by resisting the spirit of fear. Now, isn't that what Jesus told Jairus to do? He said, fear not, believe only. Now, really, that's what he said. Fear not. So Jairus was responsible for resisting the spirit of fear, but continuing to believe why he had come to Jesus, what he believed to begin with, the reason that he went to him and fell before him to start with, all of these things, hang on to that. Rebuke it. I'm telling you, it's when you don't feel like doing it that you better do it now. Because that's when your flesh is putting up a guard against your faith. Guard against, because uh, you don't feel like it. And, and it's time to praise instead of being depressed. Depression is a manifestation of grief and sorrow. Amen. And the, 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 the ridiculous part of it is the depressant is grieving about something he ain't even lost yet. I know, I've been through it. I've been delivered from it, praise God. Amen, I'm a free man from that spirit today. But I know what that hard hurt driving you. And, and you know in your mind, you're, in fact, you're, you're thinking thoughts like, you know, I need to resist this. I need to take a stand against this. This is not God. This is not right. And all the time your mouth is spewing all that doubt and unbelief and fear and grief and sorrow and you're just cutting everybody's head off that comes in the room. And all the time you're thinking, this is not right. This is not right. I need to resist that. And, and your wife comes in and says, well, let's pray. And out splatters out of your mouth. Well, I don't pray as good as you can. I don't need you praying for me. 
and she reaches over to put her hand on you and you reach up there and knock it out of the way and all the time you're thinking, I wish she'd pray. <laughs> That's how screwed up a fear-filled mind is. A depression-filled mind, nobody loves me and they're all standing there telling you we love you. Yeah. No, you don't, I know you don't. <laughs> Now, you're going to have to turn against that thing somewhere down the line because it has you turned against God. And somewhere you have to stick your feet in the ground and say, no, 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 I happen to be a free man here. You're not pushing me in this direction anymore. And I tell you, your old emotions and your mind and your body all just, just go to fighting against you and it's just all you can do to keep from just, just getting mad and throwing us fit you need to learn how to lock down. Amen. Amen. Take your body over into neutral feeling. Take your body into the mode of obedience in spite of all that hell's pouring on you. Take your body under control. Cast that junk out of your mind and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I refuse to rebel one more second. I refuse to go crosswise of the word and in the name of Jesus, body you straighten up, minds you straighten up. In Jesus' name, I place myself under the blood of Jesus and I rebuke you fear. I come against you fear. I'm gonna smile whether hell likes it or not. <laughs> the amazing part of it is you can break that spirit of oppression in less than five minutes. Yes. It doesn't have any power over you. Amen. But you're going to have to do it on purpose. You're going to have to take your stand. Knowing fear is sin. It's not okay. We've been delivered from it. We've not been given a spirit of fear. So you don't have any business taking it and you do have business resisting it. Hallelujah. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today on our KCM website. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. Imagine a life untouched by fear. What could you accomplish if you weren't afraid? How far could your faith in God take you? Learn how you can live without fear with Seven Steps to Walking Fear-Free, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated, but Jesus already delivered you from the spirit of fear at the cross. When he defeated death, he destroyed the root of fear and all of the curse that is attached to it. Fear of lack, sickness, disappointment, death doesn't have a hold on you anymore. Decontaminate your faith by renewing your mind to the Word of God. Even in the midst of pressure and tribulation, you can be of good cheer. Believe and receive the love of God. Draw near to Him and fear has to flee. It's time to live a life of love and joy and truly walk in freedom from all fear. Discover the fearless life that Jesus made possible for you. Request your copy of Seven Steps to Walking Fear-Free, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. A fear-free life is your covenant right. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225-787-310. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today.
Glory to God, Jesus has delivered us from all fear. Through his work of redemption, Jesus destroyed the kingdom of darkness and broke the power of the enemy. You no longer have to live bound by fear, sin, sickness, poverty, or any part of the curse. Now you can live a new life in the kingdom of God with him as your heavenly father. The Bible says that God is love and there is no fear in him. His loving arms are open wide to receive you into his family right now. Jesus did the hard part for you. He paid the price for your sin and took your punishment. There is nothing standing between you and God right now. All you need to do to enter God's family is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. A new life filled with God's love and free from all fear is available to you right now. Will you pray this with me? Lord, I confess my sins before you. I turn my life over completely. Take over and be the Lord of my life. I receive you as my Savior. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive my new language. Thank you that I'm born again. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. All of heaven is rejoicing right now. You have just been born again as a child of the living God. He's made you a joint heir with Jesus, and you have the right to receive every blessing that heaven has to offer. To help you understand your new life in God's family, the Copelands have a gift they want to send you for free. It's called the Salvation Package. In the book, He Did It All For You, discover what it means to be called a child of God. Learn about the covenant benefits God has given to you and how to receive His blessing in your life every day. There are also two brochures to help you get started reading your Bible. The best way to get to know your Heavenly Father is by reading His Word and speaking with Him in prayer. God loves to spend time with his family, and he's so excited to share with you the glorious plan he has for your life. To request your free copy of the Salvation Package, go to kcm.org. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Until next time, this is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you called the Salvation Package. Learn about the new birth and how you can live your new life victoriously in Christ. Email us at partners at kcm.org.uk and receive your free package. Keep your heart full of God's Word and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.